السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد في وقائدنا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will uh, uh, have some uh, uh, headlights on Hadith uh, uh, 34, 35, and 36, inshallah. To start with Hadith 34, عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان So on the authority of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله عنه uh, He said I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, uh, saying Whosoever of you sees an evil let him change it with his his hand and if he is not able to do so then let him change it with his tongue and if he is not able to do so then with his heart and that is the weakest of faith in this hadith uh, the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam informs us that uh, it's obligatory to reject what is wrong as much as one is able. So this hadith uh, enjoins the good and forbids the evil. All prophets, may Allah be, um, have his salam upon them all, all prophets enjoin upon people what is right and forbid them from what is wrong. So they make lawful for them the good thing, and they prohibit for them the evil. When the Prophet wasallam used to be personally attacked, nothing would change. He would do nothing, because that's uh, something per they are trying to um, abuse him personally. So, um, he, he wouldn't care. But the rights of subhanahu wa ta'ala are violated then you can see in you can see it in his face you can hear it in in his voice and uh, in fact righteous people become really agitated when they see an evil so first of all you have to make sure that uh, you are not rejecting the act of evil for any personal reason. This is a, a, a rule. When this is achieved, then you have to stop the evil by any means. If you are in a, power, in a powerful position, um, if you are... Uh, um, uh, let's say you are a manager, you are a principal, you are a mayor, you are um, a king, then you do, you do change the uh, evil thing with your hands. You can do anything you want. If you don't have the power to do it by hand, then speak about it. Let words do the work advice using words uh, and uh, when you use words you remind the one who committed the wrongdoing you remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you remind him of the akhirah you remind them of the punishment that will face them as a result for doing evil and of course, the least you can do if you cannot make the change by hand or by word is to make dua silently. And uh, by this, you let your heart do the job. 
Now, if someone knows that the re rejecting the evil by hand or by words will harm them, then rejecting the evil with the heart is obligatory. So don't harm yourself. Now, if someone's heart does not reject what is wrong, this shows that Iman or the faith, uh, uh, the faith of this person has gone from his heart. He, because a good heart immediately feels the evil and immediately rejects it. Abu Hurairah narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, someone who is present at an act of disobedience of Allah and his Messenger and disapproves it, so someone is present at a place where there is a disobedience of Allah and uh, his, his messenger, but he doesn't like it. He disapproves this evil act. This person is uh, as if uh, he is someone who is not present at the place where this disobedience happened. But if someone who is not present and likes this disobedience, he is as if he were present at it and he will be punished. Same thing as those who are practicing this disobedience. Um, it is also said that uh, any people among whom acts of disobedience, disobedience are done uh, and who are able to change that wrong action, but do not do anything, do not change anything, then soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will envelop them with, with punishment. And similarly, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, any person who is among, among whom acts of disobedience are done and which they are able to change, but they do not change, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will strike them with punishment before they die. So Allah would not leave them without punishment. There is disobedience, a person who is present, a person of faith who is present should uh, uh, should change that disobedience, should disapprove that disobedience. So never feel comfortable when you see an, an evil act being carried out. You have to prevent the evil. You have to do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, one of the etiquettes about, uh, to observe when enjoining the good and forbidding the evil is mentioned by Ibn Taymiyyah when he said, let your enjoining of the good be in a good manner. This is very important. And your forbidding of the evil not be in an evil manner. So you are doing something good do it in a good way. Do it the correct way. Don't do it in a wrong way so that it will change to be an evil action. So sometimes, sometimes you have all the right to, uh, in, in uh, a situation that happens, but, but you... Uh, you say bad words, you say you, you got angry, then things will be against you. They will not be the same as what, uh, what uh, should be because of your behavior. So you have to choose the good way to, to know how to do uh, something uh, uh, that it leads to something good. So a good thing should be done in a good manner not in an evil manner. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and give us, inshallah, the courage to be able to change what should be changed in the best way possible. So, uh, inshallah, we'll move to our uh, next hadith. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوان المسلم أخو المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يكذبه ولا يحقر التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب امرئ من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام دمه وماله وعرضه so on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not envy one another. I'm going to read the translation and then I will go, um, uh, I will go um, uh, point by point, inshallah. So do not envy one another. Do not forbid against each other. Do not um, bid against each other, which means do not inflate prices for one another. Do not hate one another and do not turn away from one another. And let none of you sell against the sale of others. So do not uh, let, um, so none of you sell against the sale of another, but rather be slaves of Allah and be brothers amongst yourselves. yourselves. A Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He does not oppress him, nor does he fail him nor does he lie to him, nor does he hold him in, in contempt. Taqwa, uh, or piety, is right here. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pointed to his chest three times. It is evil enough for a man to hold his brother his brother Muslim in contempt. The whole of a Muslim is inviolable or is sacred for another Muslim, his blood, his property, and his honor. So let's, let's talk about this hadith in, uh, uh, in more details, inshallah. Now, this hadith, as we, we've seen, uh, focuses on the concept of brotherhood in Islam. It lists um, several categories that the Muslim should not fall into in regards to his relation with his brothers. So to start with, the first one, the first category is do not envy one another. Do not envy. Ibn Rajab radiallahu anhu said, envy, he's, he, he gives an, a definition for envy. What's envy? Envy is for a person to hate uh, for others from his kind to surpass him in anything that is praiseworthy. So uh, this is set in the nature of mankind. Um, in fact, envy is dangerous because it means that a person is unhappy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it leads that person to, to be always in a state of worriness and, and uh, anxiety. 
um, envy actually is the first sin that was committed in the higher world by Iblis. It is also the first sin committed in this dunya by Qabil, who, who was envious of his brother and thus killed him. So this is what, uh, this, uh, how, how envy uh, is uh, shown in, uh, whether in the sky or on earth, when the um, uh, when it first started, the envy of the sky is done by Iblis. The envy of the earth, the first envy of the earth, was done by Qabil, who uh, killed his brother. If I want to talk a little more about envy, we find that um, there are two types of envy. Uh, the first uh, type is the prohibited one. It's the malicious envy, which means um, uh, to wish someone to lose the blessings that he has by transgressing against him in speech and action. And this case shows how bad the one who uh, uh, who envies is the person uh, who practices envy cannot accept that blessings are granted to anyone other than himself. He feels jealous. He feels jealous of everybody. Anyone who is better than him, he he cannot stand it. He feels jealous of him. Some people even wish that the blessing is to be removed from people, even if they themselves do not get it. And this is the worst type of envy. And Abu Dawood radiallahu an, narrated that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, beware of malicious envy. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is warning people because he knows that uh, there are people of sick hearts and envying is one of the uh, illnesses of the heart that should be worked on, that should be treated. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, beware of malicious envy because malicious envy eats up good deeds like fire eats up kindling. It's so dangerous. The second type of envy is the good envy, which is called in Arabic al ghibta And uh, this type of envy means uh, that you are happy that other people are enjoying their blessings. And you make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would keep their blessings and grant you similar ones. And this is a good, uh, actually, a good type of ghibta. There is nothing wrong with uh, this type. Now, the second category that the hadith talks about is um, do not bid against each other. La tanajashu. What does this mean? What does this word mean? Um, the uh, najash is uh, to artificially increase the price of a product. For example, you wanna buy something for $100. Then someone speaks so highly about it and offers 130 without intending to buying it. He doesn't, he, he doesn't have the intention to buy it, but he does that. So you have to pay more to get that item. So, do not, so the hadith says, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, do not inflate prices for one another. This is not um, acceptable. And uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, orders that no one does this. La tanajashu. The third type is 
ولا تباغضوا Do not hate one another ولا تدابروا And do not turn away from one another So Sometimes Incidents happen uh, People have disputes Sometimes it reaches to the point of fighting about something And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu is saying لا تباغضوا Do not hate one another. Hate is what the shaitan tries to put between the believers. And it is mentioned in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ Shaitan only wants to cause between you animosity and hatred. And what happens normally when someone hates another person, he boycotts him. Uh, turning actually your back to one another is similar to something known as hajr, boycotting. And the Prophet وسلم, said, it is not permissible for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. It's not permissible for people not to speak for, with each other for more than one, three days. If they have a dispute, if they have a problem with each other, they meet and each one of them turns away from the other. So if they meet, they would not look at each other. But Sayyidina Muhammad goes on and says, the best of them is the one who starts the salam. He is the better person, the one who starts the salam. And it was said that once Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, uh, met Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he did not give him salam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was uh, uh, worried, what's going on with uh, uh, Omar? So he went to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told him. And when uh, Sayyidina Omar came, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, did that really happen, Ya Omar? And he said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. وَخَيْرُهُمَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ بِالسَّلَامِ The best of people is the one who starts the salam. In this case, even there is no dispute. So, so this is a general rule. The best of people is the one who starts the salam when both people meet. So, and I know that Abu Bakr is better than me, and that's why I was silent. I did not say the salam. I wanted him to say the salam, to start the salam. So the best of them is the one who initiates the salam and the one who gives the greeting. Another point, uh, and let none of you sell against the sale of another. So we have um, uh, this case here is undercutting in trade. So undercutting in trade is something that is uh, warned against by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's undercutting? Give, uh, examples about undercutting is that uh, A sells B something for about uh, for fifty dollars. C came by and tells B he would sell the same thing for forty dollars. So another merchant came and uh, told the buyer that he will offer it ten dollars less this is called undercutting in trade and this is not allowed again uh, another example is that uh, 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 a sells b something for 25 dollars then c comes and says he would buy it for 30 dollars so A asks for the item back. 
So these things, uh, these two examples are undercutting examples and they are not allowed. See, the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned against uh, undercutting in trade. So uh, do not undercut believers and also non-believers in trade. Why? Cutting non, the, the non-believers in trade has many ill effects, a lot of them, so many bad effects. And the most important of which is not, so the non-believers would not trust the Muslims and that would give a bad image about Islam. So it's not allowed. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, goes on. وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا So don't do this. لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبع بعضكم على بعض but rather be slaves of Allah and brothers. Be brothers amongst yourselves. yourselves. So that the purpose of brotherhood is to help one another in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attaining piety. Otherwise, it is artificial. It's not true brotherhood for the sake of Allah. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, wants people to be brothers. Helping the brother is not necessarily when they ask for it. And this is very important. So brothers do not wait until they, uh, they are uh, in debt and then they ask for money from each other. No, if you feel that your, your brother in Islam needs some money, just give him the money. And we will talk about this more in more details in the next hadith, how we should treat our uh, brother, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, says here, help your brother. Help your brother. Al-Muslim, akhul muslim La yazlimhu. So... Help your brother whether he is oppressed or oppressive. What does this mean? They said we help him when he is uh, being oppressed. But how do we help him when he is oppressing? He say, and say the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, just do not uh, let him go in his oppression. Advise him. Ask him to be away from oppression. Get him out of op uh, oppression. And this is how you help your brother in Islam. Al-Muslim akhu al-Muslim la yazlimhu wa la yakhzilhu wa la yakzibhu wa la yahqirhu. So a Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He does not oppress him. He does not fail him. Nor does he lie to him, nor does he hold him in contempt. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how, uh, how, how should the relation between people should be. In one of the, in one of the ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisaun min nisaun asa an yakunna khayran minhum, wa la talmizu anfusakum, wa la tanabazu bil alqab. A very, a very precise, a very detailed ayah. So, oh, you who have believed, ya ayyuhal ladhina amen. Let not a people, people ridicule other people. Perhaps they may be better than them. And by this, better in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing, nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps 
they may be better than them. And do not insult one another. Do not call each others by offensive nicknames. So these are guides for brothers in Islam, for the relation among brothers in Islam. And then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu says, At-taqwa ha huna wa yushiru ila sadrihi thalatha marat. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu says, Taqwa or piety is right here, and he points to his chest three times. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He points to his heart. What does this mean? At taqwa ha huna, piety is right here, and he points to his heart. So piety is all in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if we want to have piety, we should connect our heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in another surah, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The most noble of you is in the sight of Allah, is the most righteous of you. It is evil enough for a man to hold his brother Muslim in contempt. The whole of a Muslim is invaluable. So the whole of a Muslim is sacred. It's, it's invaluable for another Muslim. His blood, so his blood is sacred. No one is allowed to to kill uh, to, uh, to kill any 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 other person. His property. No one is allowed to steal the money, the land, or the property of any other person. And his honor. No one is to be problematic to any married couple. No one to interfere with them. No one to interfere with their affairs. No one is to backbite other Muslims or to look with an evil eye at any Muslim woman. So these are important categories that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has talked about and has urged us Muslims to follow. Now moving to the next hadith, we will see an uh, implementation of this hadith in the next one. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من نفس عن مؤمن قربة من قرب الدنيا نفس الله عنه كربة من كرب يوم القيامة ومن يسر على معسر يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر مسلما ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما دام العبد أو ما كان العبد في عون أخيه ومن سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله به طريقا إلى الجنة سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده ومن بطأ به عمله لم يسرع به نسبه. An amazing hadith. Subhanallah. This hadith is easing someone's distress. This is the title of this hadith. So this hadith is a real manifestation of how to implement true brotherhood. As if it is a continuation to the previous hadith, subhanAllah. So Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he 
who removes from a believer one of his afflictions, one of his difficulties of this life uh, in this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove one of his troubles on the day of, ju of judgment. Imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of you on the day of judgment when no, uh, when no person uh, uh, cares for any other person. A person would run away from his parents. So a person would run away from his siblings, from his parents, from his spouse, children, his clan, and his people. And he who finds relief for a hard-pressed person Okay, so this person is rewarded. So the first one, whoever, whoever re, uh, removes an affliction or whoever helps someone who is in a difficulty in this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove one of his troubles in the day after. The second one, the second case is, Anyone who finds, who, who finds relief for a hard-pressed person, Allah will make things easy for him on the day of judgment. For example, so you, 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 you lent uh, a person uh, some money and uh, you both agreed when uh, the money will be returned. So if you know that, uh, when at the end of the period that you agreed upon, that person is still poor. He doesn't have the money. He doesn't know where to get the where to get it from. If you relieved him of this debt, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will make things easy for you on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on and he says. He who covers up the faults and the sins of a Muslim, Allah will cover up his faults and sins in, the, in this world and in the hereafter. So a believer uh, should be primarily concerned actually with his own faults and should not look at other faults. But if, if someone comes to know of some sins or of some faults of a person and he hides, he conceals that person, he, did, he does not uh, um, uh, talk badly about him to people. Hey, look, look at this person, what he did. Look at that with this person, how he acted. Or so concealing this person. What will happen? Allah will cover your sins. Allah will conceal your sins in the world after. In this dunya and in the world after. Then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah supports his slave as long as the, sl the slave is supportive of his brother. So loving your brother for the sake of Allah, just for the sake of Allah. So love for loving, loving your brother for the sake of Allah makes you help that brother when he is in trouble, when he has any turbulences, when he has any problems. And you will feel happy to help. You will feel very happy to, to relieve the pain of any person, to relieve the stress of any person, to, to hide uh, the problems of any person. Your heart will, will be happy. So Allah supports his slave as long as the slave is supportive of his brother. So loving for your brother, what you love for yourself, brings about the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we've seen in previous hadith, we had the same thing. How your relation to your Muslim brother should be. You should love for him what you love for yourself. And this is uh, uh, complete, uh, having complete faith. This shows that the faith of this person is complete when he wishes for others what he wishes for himself. He has good manners. He doesn't have envy. He, he, he doesn't mind to see the good blessings happening to, to his brother the same way that happens to him. And then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on. He says, and he who trades the path, uh, the path in search of knowledge, Allah makes that path leading to Jannah easy for him. Subhanallah. And what does this mean? This means that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon all Muslims. And in fact, the first, the first words that were revealed by Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were iqra, iqra, read. And indeed, reading is an essential part of attaining knowledge. So the more you learn, the more you find that you know nothing, that you have to learn more that you have to seek for more information, for more knowledge. And in Surah Fatir, in Ayah 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, only those who have knowledge truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the commandment for us is to read, is to learn, is to seek for knowledge seek knowledge and to expand our understanding. Some scholars used to say, whoever acts upon what he knows, man alima bima alima, man amila bima alima, awrathahu allahu ilma ma lam ya'lam. Allah will teach him more things he did not know. So when you learn something, do not get proud that you know it and no other people know it. No. The one who gave you the, uh, the power to learn it can easily take it away. Some people have Alzheimer's. They lose all that information. They lose all the knowledge. They lose everything around them. So when we learn we learn for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. So, and the hadith goes on. The people who assemble in one of the houses of Allah. Any group of people who get together. Why? يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ Reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning it, reading it, teaching it. إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ There descends upon them the tranquility. وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And mercy covers them. Mercy envelops them. It protects them, it guides them, and it softens their hearts. The angels flock around them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the presence of those near him. So Imagine that you go to a, a, a gathering where you, you go there just for the sake of Allah, to learn about the Quran, to learn the tafsir of the Quran, 
and to learn to learn your the the jurisprudence of the Quran uh, that that's mentioned in the Quran. So just to learn to have more knowledge about the Quran, to memorize the Quran, to understand the Quran. Then these things will happen. Tranquility descends. Mercy envelops. Angels uh, flock around around the group, and Allah mentions this group in the presence of those who are near to Him. Then, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ends this hadith by saying, "وَمَنْ بَطَّأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ." And uh, he who lags behind in doing good deeds, his noble lineage will not make him go ahead. So our lineage will not help us. We are the uh, uh, daughter of so-and-so. We are the son of so-and-so. So we are pr proud of our lineage. We can do that in this dunya. But this will not help in the in the akhirah, in the day after. Only our actions will help us in the day of judgment. So actually, this is this hadith is, as I uh, just mentioned, it is a manifestation to the previous hadith, subhanAllah. When uh, Allah subhanahu, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about something, he makes it super clear. SubhanAllah. Um, with this, inshallah, we will stop here today and we will continue uh, next week, inshallah, or next uh, Tuesday, inshallah. And uh, before we leave, we just say, Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yinbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu wa shukru wa niyamata wa rida. Ya Allah, make us content with the way you are handling our affairs, Ya Allah. And keep our relations with our brothers, with our sisters in, in Islam strong, Ya Allah. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you by uh, sending your salam and my salam and salawat to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.